all of this is data. Data play is a very key role. You may have all resources galvanized, but if you are not informed appropriately about the number of livestock, the able land, and other agricultural inputs through a baseline survey, then the resources you have will not be widely spent. And it's, it's in that vein that we, Statistics Radio, are collaborating with your ministry. Yes, in implementing the current surveys of agriculture, for which I think I'm extremely happy we we'll have a $30 million grant to the World Bank, for which 800000 of that has been allocated to support this process of agricultural survey. It's on way. And moving forward, you will agree with me that in achieving the dream, we need to have an agricultural census, of which the last one was 40 years back. As I stand here, I think I'm extremely delighted and happy that the World Bank, through this grant, given to us, has endorsed the conduct of an agricultural census. And we will work with your ministry to make sure we have that right. So as an entry point, you have data, you have numbers, and where you can spend your money wisely, limited resources you have moving forward. You can trust what we start this way. We can download back to here. Thank you so much.
would like to know if that includes the private sector. Because the average uh, portfolio size of a development project is about $60 million. And normally it's been for three to five years. Uh, talking about $250 million in just a single year is going to be challenging to execute. So I would like to know if it includes the private sector. We know uh, even with three to five years, implementing $60 million is, is, is really challenging. There are, there are issues with efficiencies that we need to, to deal with. Um, the second aspect has to do with the issue of the policy coherence that um, the Chief Minister mentioned. Under the Seattle Proper Development Unit, um, FCC, there were three studies commissioned, and I worked as consultant on those ones. Um, an agricultural market assessment study, access to finance, and then the productive use of energy, where we looked, we looked at um, how do we um, use the compact investment into the energy sector to boost post harvest processing. Those studies are available, and um, if you contact the Secretariat, I'm not part of the Secretariat anymore. Um, my assignment concluded in August. But if you contact the, the secretary and the average studies, it's important because in the productive use of energy study, what we have there are creation of ops, which is very similar to the agro industrial zones. It, it is even mapped out where the, the energy lines will run down, and those areas that have been mapped with high potential for production. Where that will go, um, how we call it, transformer in those areas and create ops. So there is already some baseline study that you can use to be able to further develop the agro, uh, agro uh, um, zones. Um, I think in another session, I've also called your attention to the fact that the bank supported the development of an agribusiness development strategy under the Ministry of Trade. They are very, very clear. Uh, you can contact your colleague in the Ministry of Trade to be able to, to look at um, that strategy. And I think it will help in terms of um, pushing this agenda forward. Um, lastly, the President, now I'm wearing the cap of um, UNICEF as a consultant also to UNICEF. The President mentioned yesterday the issue of uh, nutrition. And um, that is very, very critical for us as um, an agency working on nutrition, supporting children and uh, pregnant women. So we'd like to see the, the strategy being up updated to strongly reflect that component. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, and the area of uh, that's quite the area of presentation. Do you realize that 2021, um, just less than 100 million, uh, to the GW fund, they said, um, 3,000 jobs already, 10,000 jobs already. So when you look at the budget, you have 119 billion in there. When you divide 119 billion by 191 children, it gives you about 600 million. Million per children. So if you have a billion per children, trust me, we can create at least 150 jobs through agriculture per children. So scaling it up into all our areas, agriculture and um, all our products, just, just in agriculture, just in agriculture, we create more jobs than expected. And, um, the aspect of transparency and accountability in implementing the youth project. Let's see how we can allow young people to decide what they want. Say for instance, Tafu Blom. We know only about a very homogeneous man, Tafu Blom. Young people are Tafu Blom, who come from Guinea. They don't give money at Tafu Blom, and at the end of the production, they can take the onions to Guinea. So why can't we get Young people are trying to have a billion plus to so produce onions that are in the same figures. So I'm just asking that we do our input here at a particular level. We 
was talking about children. And I want to thank you again. We have been very supportive and we have been having discussion. We are almost as far as how we will be meant to do it. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister of Agriculture, um, for efforts in putting together these fine documents. It's not a question, you also invited suggestions. Um, among the partners here is money. Um, do we have WSP here? WSP? They're not here. I most respectfully um, suggest that you work closely with uh, WFP because one, they have the data, two, they have the contacts to get um, necessary funds. Um, for example, whilst I was um, ambassador to um, the African Union, I know for sure that WFP was able to help the government of Sudan. It's unfortunate there's an implosion there to secure 60 million United States dollars and um, to cultivate a competitive crop. So if we can identify them and we can collaborate with them. And also, um, in life, um, it's no disgrace to look around when you don't know what to do. You look around and see what other people are doing. For example, when Norway discovered oil, UK and others were already exploiting oil and they made a lot of mistakes. The Norwegians were determined that we are not going to repeat the mistakes the United Kingdom made. And they went around on study tour and came up with the Ten Commandments of the Norwegian oil and gas industry. I will most respectfully suggest to you that you work closely with the Foreign Ministry of Sierra Leone and take a story tour to Nigeria. Whilst ambassador to the EU again, the Nigerian ambassador there, he was my friend, my namesake, he's called Adi Kometu, he's now the scope to the new president. He shared um, a story wherein factories closed down in Indonesia because within two years, Nigeria was able to produce its own rice. And also how to tackle the problem, Minister, you just mentioned. Because with this excess supply of rice, then they also had the problem of smuggling um, to deal with. And also, I will also suggest that again, you liaise with the foreign ministry to reach out to the South African government. There is a fund in the foreign ministry of South Africa for developing countries for rice cultivation. Um, they started it in Guinea. It's doing well. They were about to cascade it to Sierra Leone when Ebola struck. I had that um, conversation with the South African ambassador to African Union, Anandis Ababa, because there is a lot we can achieve, you know, in Africa um, by cooperation through the EFCFCA and also technical, you know, assistants. I thank you. Good morning, sir. Uh, my name is Susan uh, from the Sierra Leone Coalition of Service. Mine is not a question, but a suggestion and uh, also to seek support from the Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Finance. It may interest you, sir, to know that um, as at this morning, the Australian Question of Service has an inmate population of over 6,000. And those inmates are aged between 18 and 35, with 90% of them. Um, the Ministry of Finance, on a monthly basis, spends over billions of years to feed those inmates and also to provide rice for over 2,000 correction officers. Sir, so I just want to inform you that uh, the Australian Correctional Service has acquired um, 
more than 10 acres of land um, situated at uh, Rolako, closer to Makedi, a Chinese farm in Kenema, Bederu, and we also have vast acreages of land in Mafanta. But the challenges we have there is um, we don't have the funds to go into large scale farming. We have discussed this issue several, several years with the Ministry of Finance, the FS knows. Um, we want to partner with the Ministry of Agriculture to help the country to fix salon. So I'm just standing here this morning or afternoon to kindly ask the Ministry of Agriculture to partner with the Australian uh, Pensioner Service because we have the land and we have the manpower. Uh, sending somebody to prisons without restructuring the person or without giving the person skills um, when he comes back to society is the aim of the Australian Pensioner Service. Thank you, sir.
So before I leave here, um, I would like to connect. I think uh, one of your colleagues have already come to our our meetings, and we would, would really like to make this. Uh, we'd like to concretize this. I think uh, we need a couple more meetings to make sure we're getting all what we need to really implement and drive this home. So this, for sure, is one of the key things I think we must do if we're going to be serious about this. So it's not only the correctional service, it's also the fire force. The small force had this conversation with Mr. Abitura, and I think he's telling me more um, the forces that can really help. The fire force is oh, by the way, just, just because we say most people, this doesn't mean you have to be involved. A long value chain, you can contract machinery for people that are producing. As long as we count metric tons produced here, that goes towards um, the requirements that we hope to put forward in that policy. On um, the uh, Minister of, um, from, from Western Area, yes, I think um, I already mentioned that we are engaged with the BFP. They are a good partner. We've done a number of work with them. One of the things we want to do is really around this nutrition and school feeding. And they have convinced them that they will increase a lot of their feeding that they do, their big counterpart to government feeding program. A lot of it comes through purchasing. We've engaged them that we want you to double or even uh, quadruple the, the, the amount of rice that they bring in, that we want that to be produced here locally. So homegrown school feeding is a big thing that they've committed. And to make a steady progress in that area as well. Um, so we're learning a lot from them and how to do all of these things that we'd like to do. Um, yes, we part of part of this strategy is informed by a lot of literature review, conversation with people, so stuff that people are doing in Nigeria. Um, so these are all things we've looked at, especially the policy around um, um, engaging rice importers. They had a more drastic measure, they said. We are going to stop all importation of rice, which you know um, they have done some 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 production, and that was what they did. So we saw lessons around that, right? So we're learning from other places. I will um, engage the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to look at this fund um, that that uh, you mentioned. Um, I'm just going down the list on the budget execution, two hundred and. Uh, four million. That's what it will cost to do all the things that we want to do. And I think if we're going to be, I hear where you're coming from with this. Um, if we're going to be serious, those are the things that we should do, and we should work really hard that we do those things. The challenges are there. I understand this capacity absorption, all these things, but those are the things we must also fix so that we can actually be able to do that. If we don't do that, we're not going to do, we're not going to do things at all. So we can't say, oh, we don't have absorption capacity, so let's not put what we need to do. Um, so we will work very hard that we're able to do that. Thank you um, for the link with um, the MCC work you guys have done. I actually engaged quite a lot with uh, Nde when they were doing this process. Um, identifying the uh, productive use of energy. I think we sent her and the team then probably were engaged um, in a number of locations for them to look at. So we will look at that to feed into. We've already actually looked at that and see where that fits into some of our work. Um, the agribusiness uh, policy that you talked about, the trade, we've also looked at that document. Thank you again for the reminder and suggestion. On nutrition, I mentioned, um, I think the president was very clear yesterday. He spent a whole segment of his speech on that. And we are also very clear on that. I think we, we the indicator you have there is just one simple indicator, but we will look at all the other indicators. And uh, we engaged the donor partners to give us feedback on this one, and they were very detailed with some of the things that we can do to be able to also address that. As I mentioned, our culture is really a food systems approach. The Sun Secretariat in DP's office, they are part of developing this process. They are feeding in to what we're doing. And so we will, we will take a strong look at that. And um, next year, with collaboration with the BFP, we will pilot um, and pro the promotion of OFSPs because we know for micro deficient, uh, micro deficiencies among children, 
it's a, it's a key challenge, and we think we can use that to go biofortification, food fortification. These are all things that we can do to make sure uh, we meet our nutritional targets. Um, jobs. Uh, yes, I think the job we have, the 35,000 jobs, is formal jobs, but we know agriculture can be a massive um, source for job creation for young people and women in rural areas. Um, we will take a look at that number again. Um, like you rightly said, with the children of farms, it was 40 youth at least directly per children. If you multiply that by uh, 92 at the time, yes, yeah, so that's a lot of number. Um, if we expand and have other activities, we know we can get um, we can get a lot more from, from that. But the number we have is four more jobs that we think if we have um, agro industrial zones or clusters that we can have these four more jobs that are linked um, to the sector. Um, a very um, another question I got on fisheries and why it's not here. That's a very important question. Um, I think aquaculture should be in this strategy, but we can't do everything all at once. So there will be opportunities to take a look at this again. But mind you, we've got the Ministry of Fisheries as well. Um, at the round table yesterday, we had the minister um, who explained how what she does links to the pizza loan program as well. So we can't do it all. It's a systems approach, and there are lots of players in the system also. But you're right. Uh, fisheries, aquaculture, this should all be a part of what we do with pizza loan. Um, uh, very nice to meet you, SG. I've been waiting to meet you. I've read reports about this data that we're collecting. Uh, the, the 50 by 30, sorry, 2030. Um, I know we've done the first phase of the post production, and by January we'll have this data post harvest, post planting. You're now going to post harvest. Yes, I asked my team, they briefed me. I'm very delighted by that. Because I buy your idea that before we do anything, we must have a baseline. This strategy, what we've done, we just existing data already. We couldn't wait to do a big census before we set a program in place. This strategy builds on prior work. It's trying to expand on where it's done. But in the process, when I came, one of the, the key things I wanted to do was we must have a baseline on all of our key groups. So I was delighted that you were doing this. So I was like, okay, we can remove that. We don't have to do that. I would like to register all our partners in a digital way because I know if we do that, there are lots of services we can get to. That's in our program. But with the work you are doing, I think we can get a firm baseline of where we are. Uh, this is a little secret where you can ask more about if they will go there. You really don't know the exact national average rule for rice. Not gonna lie about that, not gonna be shy about it. You must fix that though. It's only through what you're doing that we're gonna be able to do that. So we know that's very key. We're gonna do that. On the census, I'm delighted about that. My only uh, my only concern when my team told me these things cost a lot of money, it takes a very long time. And I wonder and we can have this conversation if we can do this uh, with now technology and all of this more quickly. Um, and set systems in place so that it can be more routine. Um, because we can, we can really do it now, right? So, so I'm, I'm delighted that that work is going on and that we can engage on that as well. Um, transparency. Um, I've seen the audit reports, I've seen the news articles, I've seen all these things. They are what they are. But I would say going forward, I think one of the main things we're going to strive for is being very transparent in what we do. And one of the ways I think we're going to deliver is to put a lot of emphasis on implementation and monitoring that implementation. So I didn't show you the institutional structure for how we're going to do things alone, but we will establish, in addition to the structures that we have, District monitors for implementation of programs on the pizza. We want people on the ground to tell us if we say 
We're going to do 10,000 hectares. We're going to plow that. We want to make sure we've done that. We are not going to just stand on the roadside and you tell us, ah, over there, behind there, that's how we have the rest of the, the farms. We will take a drone and fly it and see if behind those trees there, we have the rest of the farms. This is some of the ways we're going to be very practical and this, this is some of the ways we hope we will be able to get value for money for what's coming in the sector. I think that's, that's good um, on that. Um, Tax incentives. I, I think the new finance act that comes out will have a number of tax incentives. The old one already has uh, importation of any agricultural machinery businesses that set up and hire women in the sector. These all have incentives, and when that gets updated, you will see a lot of that come through as well. Uh, you asked about the disabled in farming. I think the aim is not, we're, not, we're going to try as much as possible to include everybody that can do anything to feed themselves. So we know as part of the pizza loan program, a small part of it has to be addressing vulnerable populations. So, and where people can farm, where they can do what they can, we will support that. Uh, let me see, am I missing anyone with this? Uh, I think I've covered all this round of questions that have come. I think I was I saw something on, on benchmarking which I think I've addressed a little bit with the uh, benchmark. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, the minister is going to let kind of Let's give him a round of applause. We know a lot of work still has to be done, but this is just the start of the engagement. We know the program has been launched, it's now official, and it's going to drive government's agenda for the next three to five years. So, I will just advise for our future of our culture, they are coming for the budget hearings around the 16th or 17th of this month, um, in October. So we, we will zoom in more specifically on the objectives for next year, for 2024, specifically because like someone was saying, how do we monitor that after five years, six years, can we say what's the impact of fix alone? So, at the budget here of that $257 million for the cap of 160, they say, we want to zoom in and know exactly what are the deliverables under that budget, what areas or districts or sectors of the economy that will cover what are the input activities and how can we prioritize? What's the role of the private sector and government in achieving that? So that will be the focus and that will guide whatever we have to include in the budget for next year. So I want to thank you all very much. Uh, but before we close, I think it is what's fitting that we invite our Deputy Minister One, who was the Commissioner, Deputy Commissioner of NRA, to give the closing uh, remarks. So let's give a round of applause for Deputy Minister One, Mr. General Thank you very much, um, FS. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just want to use this opportunity to say thank you to Honorable Vice President, uh, Honorable Chief Minister, all ministers and deputy ministers here present, all controllers, and everyone else who has come to support uh, the beginning of this budget process. Um, I want to say also thank you to my minister for his leadership, FS for your support, and most importantly to our budget team at the Ministry of Finance for the work that they have put in. There's a lot that has been going into what we saw today and what is going to continue starting next week. So I just want to implore each and every one of you to continue to take this process very seriously. Uh, 2024 is going to be new beginnings for us as we work to support the government, the president, and his uh, big five uh, uh, projects. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming and enjoy your lunch. Thank you.